Temporal anti-aliasing, also known as TAA. Is it a blessing or is it a curse? TAA is the de facto anti-aliasing in video games these days, and whether you think it's just a blurry mess that is ruining game graphics, or you think we have finally reached the holy grail of cheap and effective anti-aliasing, well, guess what? TAA is here to stay for the foreseeable future regardless of what you think. So what is TAA? Why do so many games use it? What are the downsides? What are the upsides? That is what this video is going to be about today. Going in depth for sure, but not too far down so as to get lost in the details. To understand TAA, I think the best place to start looking is why it exists in the first place. At one point there wasn't TAA, so what came before it and why did it come to existence? For about a full decade from the late 90s to around 2010, the best anti-aliasing you could get in a game was Super Sample Anti-Aliasing, also called SSAA. I can demonstrate what super sampling is with Crisis 3 here from 2013, as you're seeing running without anti-aliasing right now at 1080p. It's quite jaggy, and there's a lot of instability in the image here, especially in any of the finer details, like the grass or on the edges of the weapons and hands. So how do you go about applying super sample anti-aliasing to clean up this jaggy mess here? We do that by running the game at a much higher resolution and then compressing it down from that ultra high resolution back into the smaller resolution. So for example, 8K resolution down to 1080p is known as eight times super sample anti-aliasing or 8X SSAA for short, and 4K down to 1080p is known as four times SSAA. In practice, it looks like this in Crisis 3. Notice how much more stable the image is now with ADEX SSAA being applied. The grass when swing is sharp without any breakup. And when we look at the leaves, there's much finer detail and the weapon model no longer has that obvious stair-stepped look to the edges. And there's just generally less flickering and shimmering in motion. I think the vast majority of people would say the image on the right is much superior to the one on the left. So super sample anti-aliasing creates some great results, but why is it so uncommon these days and why am I talking about it more or less in the past tense? The reason is due to performance. As I said earlier, you are running the game at effectively a much, much higher resolution and compressing it down. Now on a modern GPU like the RTX 3070, when we run Crisis 3, we can see on the left here at the high settings in game without anti-aliasing at 1080p that the game is running nearly 200 frames per second without it being CPU limited. On the right, we have four times SSAA, which is essentially 4K, and the game's frame rate is heavily reduced, 70 FPS. At 8X SSAA, the frame rate is but a fraction, 19 FPS there. Crisis 3 is more than 10 years old and we're only at 1080p here. So imagine how slow super sample anti-aliasing would be in a modern game at even higher resolutions like 1440p or 4K. Since SSAA is expensive and has essentially always been expensive, a compromise solution was developed called multi-sample anti-aliasing, also known as MSAA. The real way MSAA works is complex on a technical level, but I just want you to imagine it simplified as super sampling on the geometry of a game. The idea is that, hey, games are made up of a lot of triangles. And instead of multiplying the resolution of the entire image, why don't we just multiply the resolution of the geometry and its edges to get a similar effect? Multi-sample anti-aliasing was transformative and surprisingly cheap back in the day. Check out this example from the Elder Scrolls Oblivion, running at 8x MSAA at 1600 by 1200 on an 8800 GTX. This is the first commercial GPU that explicitly supported that very high level of MSAA at a very high resolution at that time. Here we can see a similar smoothing effect like which we saw with super sample anti-aliasing in Crisis 3. Obvious jaggies are cleaned up and there's flickering that is going away and the performance hit is lower than what we saw with super sampling. The 8800 GTX is losing around 35% of its raw frame rate here with 8X MSAA, and that is much better than the near 90% reduction in frame rate we saw in Crisis 3 on the 3070 with 8X SSAA. Like super sampling, there are quality modes too, so you can run a 2X mode or a 4X mode, 
with less reduction of the jagged edges, but also less of a performance hit. MSAA was a great compromise, so why do nearly all modern games not use it? There are a couple reasons. The first is due to the rise of deferred rendering. Now I could spend a lot of time here, but you just need to know that deferred rendering is introduced into game engines to increase rendering complexity while not being performance intensive. An example of a deferred rendering type would be deferred lighting, which could greatly increase the amount of visible lights on screen versus previous methods. This is a huge topic in its own right, but the whole point is that many game engines started switching to these deferred approaches to enable new visual quality. Killzone 2 is a famous historical example, but with many other examples existing before and after it. Deferred rendering is largely incompatible with multi-sample anti-aliasing as it has been done in the past. MSAA could be added to a game, but at a great cost in working hours, and it would typically have worse performance. So as time went on, less and less games would ship supporting MSAA, and those that did were quite rare. For example, Crisis 3 that I just showed off. That supports multi-sample anti-aliasing, even though it uses aspects of deferred rendering. Turning on MSAA to 8x in that game nearly halves the frame rate at 1080p on the 3070, and it has a higher relative frame time increase than what we saw in Oblivion earlier on the 8800 GTX. At 4K, it's even worse. The FPS is more than halved, and the frame time cost of MSAA is more than the entire cost of rendering the game altogether without AA on. That is a huge cost performance on a very modern GPU, I would say, in a game that is more than a decade old. Dovetailing into this was the fact that multi-sample anti-aliasing was getting worse at its own job. Remember, MSAA in principle is only going to be working on geometry for the most part. That's perfect for older games like Jedi Academy from 2003, where the graphics are mainly made up of simple textures and just geometry, but MSAA's effect of working on geometry became less useful when pixel shading started to dominate the way games looked. Things like normal maps, as popularized by Doom 3, were making game lighting and object detail being driven by textures instead of geometry alone. And many other aspects of shading were starting to be done with new ways. You had stuff like volumetric lighting popping up in many games or screen space ambient occlusion that was growing in use. All these new effects had little to do with the geometry that multi-sample anti-aliasing was going to be affecting. For example, if we go back to Crisis 3, you can see some issues with MSAA. In the scene I showed off earlier, MSAA was doing a good enough job. It was cutting the frame rate in half on the 3070, but it was doing its work. Now let's look at this scene here. But we can see already MSAA is not working very well. As the camera's moving, we can see a lot of jaggies and flickering present in the metal on this scene here. This is called specular aliasing. The right side with MSAA is flickering almost as much as the left side without any anti-aliasing at all. So in a scene like this one, you could be potentially halving your frame rate with 8x MSAA, but it's not effectively making the game less jagged. Or take this scene from the intro of the game, and there's a wet water shading effect being applied to the pistol and nearly the entire scene. Notice how the right side with multi-sample anti-aliasing looks no different than the left side without it. So the frame rate is going to be halved here for no visual improvement. This issue of MSAA being ineffective due to specialized shading is perhaps its biggest issue. Games nowadays use even more complex shading, and they're shinier than ever before. And MSAA is really not built to deal with that. As a stopgap after MSAA became less tenable, historically, developers came up with post-process anti-aliasing solutions like FXAA or SMAA. You don't need to know what those acronyms mean. It's just you need to know that these solutions look for visible edges in a scene after it's already been rendered. So they do it in a post-process kind of way and they try and blur and soften edges that they detect or try to detect. And this still here, we can see how they're working. We can see some edges are looking cleaner and less jagged. Though with FXAA, we can see that the entire image is actually being softened as a byproduct how it works. It's pretty inaccurate. So they look like they're working in this still here, I would say. And if we look at the frame rate hit, we can see that they're cheap to render. They're practically free when compared to no anti-aliasing. They're a lot cheaper than MSAA, that's for sure. 
The problem is these are still images. Games actually move. And as soon as we start showing some movement, we can see some of the issues becoming apparent. None of the jagged edges are actually really being cleaned up in motion. We still see flicker and shimmer on all edges, much like you would see with no anti-aliasing. These stop-gap post-process solutions like SMAA and FXAA don't actually help in aggregate as they don't understand how images are moving. They're cheap, but they're not actually good at anti-aliasing. So this is where developers started to come up with temporal anti-aliasing or TAA to replace things like FXAA and SMAA. The concept for TAA was to leverage the idea of super sample anti-aliasing, but instead of feeding that image and getting it information from a larger image like 8K, they would get more information from previous frames. So on temporal terms, over time, it is actually super sampling done over time. That is why you can sometimes see TAA being labeled as TSSAA in game options. Temporal super sampling. So what are the advantages of TAA? A big advantage of TAA is that it has similar behavior to super sampling, a la the name. So it cleans up all jaggies of all types where MSAA would break with shader aliasing as I showed earlier, well, Temporal AA was gonna clean that up quite nicely, a lot like how SSAA would. Since it works like super sampling, TAA can affect things that are not made of just geometry, like in Control here. Ray tracing effects in that game get proper edge smoothing and cleanup with TAA, which they don't get with MSAA at all, as that is really only going to meaningly affect geometric edges. The super sampling effect of TAA is really profound, and certain forms of TAA, like NVIDIA's DLAA, can actually supersede quality aspects of traditional super sampling. Check this image here, Crisis 3. We're looking at standard SSAA here, so super sampling of the old variety. When we move the camera backward and forward, I want you to notice how in the distance, there's these horizontal and perpendicular lines. And the detail on those lines is snapping. This creates a flickering in motion. DLAA, in comparison, it's gonna produce a different image, but if you look at those lines, you'll notice that they're no longer flickering in the same way they are with traditional SSAA. This super sampling property was impressive and it was quickly exploited by developers. And many games designed their effects like reflections, volumetric lighting, shadow filtering, ambient occlusion, or hair rendering to only look really clean with TAA being on. Typically developers run these at lower resolution or lower quality. Then they have TAA clean them up to look much higher quality than they actually really are. Thus they save on performance. So developers are not just using TAA to clean up jagged edges like old anti-aliasing. They're also using it to optimize game effects and hide where they cut corners on quality. So as that implies, performance is a huge part of TAA. Check out this example from Deus Ex Mankind Divided. You can see here just how much performance TAA saves versus old alternatives. TAA here reduces the average frame rate by just around 3% versus no anti-aliasing. This is completely different than MSAA, which is otherwise very expensive here. With TAA, you can get a great high frame rate experience. That is not at all possible with MSAA, especially in the 4X or 8X variety here on the RTX 3070 at 1080p. This is a 2016 game on a GPU from 2020 and only at 1080p. Think about that. I think this is a great example to show how the cards were being heavily stacked in TAA's favor to become adopted versus prior techniques like SMAA or MSAA. Nowadays, TAA has been adopted across the entire industry but it's seen a lot of iterations since its first little steps. It started off as genuinely poor and distracting in titles like Halo Reach, where that game's TAA is so rudimentary that the entire game looks like it's constantly having ghosted blurs in every single frame. Back then, people thought that was the game's motion blur, and it wasn't. It was just the game's really poor TAA. 
Compare these humble and ugly beginnings in 2010 to something like DLSS in 2024. Now this is a form of AI-assisted TAA. It doesn't just smooth jagged edges. It allows entire games to be rendered at a much lower resolution, like we see here in Control with DLSS on, and then be super sampled over time to look like a much higher resolution, and the quality is surprisingly high. So TAA nowadays has evolved into something which allows us to reduce the entire resolution of an image and then upscale it up to a higher one and it actually looks like that higher resolution image. When I talk about TAA like this, focusing on its positive aspects, it admittedly sounds pretty awesome. Better performance and better anti-aliasing quality than previous techniques, but that's just the positive stuff in isolation. If we look at the negative aspects, of which there's a laundry list of them, we can see that there's some core issues with TAA. The one of the first ones is clarity. A key issue with TAA is that it resolves softened images. Now, part of this is just the nature of what anti-aliasing is. Even super sample anti-aliasing can be considered soft. It's softening edges, smoothing them out to make the image less sharp technically and less fizzily in motion. And depending upon the method of information and how it's compressed with SSAA, the level of softness will be different. Bilinear interpolation, as we're seeing here, looks a lot softer than, say, Lencho's. That's just a technicality, but even if one considers how anti-aliasing technically softens an image, TAA is still inherently softer due to how it's integrating information from previous frames. And it does that by jittering the current frame always ever so slightly to achieve its effect. This leaves TAA resolving typically softer than other anti-aliasing techniques by default. You may find this pleasingly soft, or you may find this annoyingly blurry. A reason why you may find it blurry or you may find it good is based upon how far you are from your screen and how high resolution the game is. If you're further away from your screen and the game you're playing on it, you may not notice softness and you may just appreciate macro aspects of TAA, like how good it is at anti-aliasing. But if you're closer to a screen, the softness may be amplified and it'll become more obvious and you may dislike it. That softness then becomes even more obvious if the screen is lower resolution. Check out this shot here of this game running at 1080p without AA than 1080p with TAA. And let's compare this with 4K without TAA and 4K with TAA. I would say there's a great difference in softness when TAA is turned on with 1080p and it's much lessened at 4K. At 4K, I would say it's almost a non-issue, while at 1080p, I would say it could be particularly egregious in a game like this. This aspect of screen distance and resolution making TAA seem better or worse is key to the general problem with TAA and why some people really don't like it. For people who play console games, for example, they often play on high resolution televisions, a few meters away from them. The game might be at 30 FPS, but due to the resolution and the distance, the softness of something like TAA is not so bothersome. But on PC, many people are playing at much closer to their screens, and the resolutions are often lower. So if a game developer balances image quality to favor the console experience, then they leave a large number of PC users perhaps out to dry as they're closer to their screens, and the lower resolution they're playing at might lead to a subjectively softer and worse experience where the flaws of TAA are much more noticeable. Another issue with TAA is how it blurs on movement. Check this out, Halo Infinite with TAA on versus TAA off at 1080p. I think the issue here is pretty easy to see in this game when it's moving, but let's pause the recording and highlight it. So yes, TAA is making jagged edges go away here as it should, but it's also softening the entire image. I can say that it's softening the entire image by comparing it to super sampling which is supposed to be a quote unquote perfect image. We can see the issue if I highlight it here. Jagged edges are being softened with this blue, but the internal edge detail here, marked with red, is being softened as well. And that's honestly bad. This behavior makes the whole image look like it's blurred or softened. Same with this shot here, which is a bit more obvious actually. If we look at the edge detail on the side of the pelican here, we can see the line is perfectly cleaned up with TAA. 
But notice how the detail and lines on the ground with TAA that are there without anti-aliasing and that are there with SSAA, well, they're completely missing and smooth out of existence with TAA on. Now, Halo Infinite's TAA is especially blurry, I would say, but I could still find this behavior in all types of TAA. It's not a bug, it's a feature. How much you will notice it though is a subjective question. If you're lower resolution and closer to your screen, you'll notice it more. You'll also notice it more the more the screen is moving. So mouse users will definitely notice this more than controller users. Another aspect of TAA that plays into all this is that it's frame rate dependent. It starts looking better the higher a frame rate is. You can see this here in this example from Cyberpunk's benchmark. If I run the game at 30 FPS, 60 FPS, and 120 FPS, we can see how the image produced with 120 FPS looks better. And that's not just because it looks better because the frame rate's higher. If we stop images, we can see how there's less errors in the image, like less weird ghosted frames here and less artifacts at 120 FPS versus 60 and 30. This is because the previous frames that TAA is using are spatially closer together. There's literally less room for error. If we look at this shot here from that same sequence, we can also see that higher FPS means better anti-aliasing. Look how much better the edge anti-aliasing is here. There's less jaggies at 120 FPS than 60 or 30. If you play games at a high frame rate, you may actually like TAA's effect here but I would say it kind of biases TAA's usefulness. It makes it less useful for certain types of games because fast movement's gonna look worse. And it also makes you want to target a high frame rate, meaning you'll have to turn down your graphical ambitions. Another less than favorable aspect of TAA is how it can create visible jitter in an image. Let's go back to that shot of control earlier that I showed off. If we look at this area this time in the image, we can see that the TAA side of the images here well, you can see kind of an active jitter there. Kind of weird looking. It's a small little part of the image, but you can find this in nearly all TAA techniques due to the fact that they jitter to make this super sampling effect. And the lower your output resolution is, and the closer you are to your screen, the more obvious this error will be when it happens. Perhaps the most infamous negative aspect of TAA is when it really fails hard and it introduces a lot of ghosting from previous frames. Here's a great example from Doom 2016, a game where the temporal anti-aliasing was lauded at release. You go into Samuel Hayden's office and yeah, tons of ghosting following any and all movement of his hands. As TAA is making less than favorable judgments about which stuff to keep from previous frames and which stuff not to keep. Now, this is not the default way TAA should look, but nearly every type of TAA is capable of doing this. And I've seen this behavior hundreds of times in my years of reviewing games for Digital Foundry at any and every resolution. Even DLSS, which is kind of the apex of current TAA techniques, can have this issue, and I've showed it off a lot on the channel. The last negative aspect of TAA that I want to cover is actually a positive one that I mentioned earlier. You know, in games like Control that I showed earlier where there's reflections or shadows which only look properly high res with TAA on? I said that's a good thing as it allows developers to optimize their games in new ways. Well, it's also a bad thing when you think about it as if you don't want to use TAA and you turn it off, you're gonna get blotchy effects or low resolution effects. And a lot of game menus won't allow you to turn up effect quality individually without TAA on. And that's not a very good thing. So while TAA definitely has a lot of great aspects, it has a lot of negative ones as well. So what is my opinion here? Well, I kind of look at this in a more holistic way, historical. I think without TAA, real-time graphics would not have progressed to the point we are at now. Things like real-time path tracing in AAA games, such as Cyberpunk, just doesn't exist without the concepts that TAA brought to the table, using information from previous frames. On the console side of things, without TAA, the difference between the console generations would actually be more minor than it currently is right now, and I'm being serious there. Without TAA existing, a lot of computational power would be spent on cleaning up jagged edges and not improving other aspects of rendering, like lighting and geometry. It's always a push and a pull here. 
Things like the Matrix Awakens demo on Xbox Series consoles or PlayStation, yeah, that wouldn't be possible without TAA coming into existence. It evolved into Unreal Engine's TSR or Temporal Super Resolution and made that possible in the first place on console hardware. And it looks great. So as I see it, TAA has been a great thing in spite of the negative aspects, but I am merely one voice and there's a great plurality of voices that should be heard beyond my own. I, for example, play games at 4K and that forms the basis of my experience. TAA's issues are less visible at 4K and more visible at lower resolutions like 1080p. This is critical as a huge amount of users still play games at 1080p based on the hardware survey from Steam. And since TAA's downsides are more visible there and those downsides are ghosting and blur, well then guess what? The industry I think needs to treat TAA like other options which add blur to games. TAA should be able to be turned off much like motion blur should always be able to be turned off in a game as that is an accessibility option for people who get motion sickness. Furthermore, I think there should be a simple standard alternative available for users should they not wish to use TAA. In those Spider-Man ports by Nixies, those games on console were definitely designed around TAA being there, but you can turn off TAA in these games on PC and elect to use alternative methods like SMAA. Sure, they're not good actually at cleaning up jagged edges, but they're better than nothing and they're simple to have as an alternative. The last reason why I think TAA should be able to be toggled off is for future scaling. Right now, TAA is there because it's convenient, but in 10 years, maybe you don't actually need it to get good image quality. Maybe you can just super sample the game. In making this video, I loaded up a lot of games that were heavily super sampled on big GPUs, and I thought it looked pretty awesome without TAA being enabled. So I think developers should allow TAA or things like DLSS or FSR or TSR, whatever they're called, to be turned off so that the game can be future-proofed and you could run it in future hardware with SSAA enabled and it'll look that much better without TAA being on. Simply put, if people don't like TAA, they should be able to turn it off. I may love TAA, but a whole bunch of other people may not and they should be able to turn it off much like they can with other accessibility options. And with that being said, maybe you in the audience don't love TAA, but I hope you did love this video and all I had to say about TAA here. If you did like the video covering TAA, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. Support DF on Patreon to enable more videos like this tech focus series in the future. Comment below, follow on Twitter, and as always, this is Alex, bring you farewell, and auf Wiedersehen!